we'll keep on going. We'll continue what we need to do until we find Maya. The family of a missing Chula Vista mom continues to hold out hope that she'll still be found safe today. Another day of searching. Unfortunately, there are no new leads. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. Family and friends, helpful community members all gathered again today to look for Maya Millette. She was last seen January 7th and they've looked in a new area pretty much every weekend. This is Brandon Lewis shows us where and why they searched a small trail out in Spring Valley. Steve and Alicia, Maya Millette's family say they want to leave no stone unturned. This weekend, that means searching this trail. It's a little bit further north of her home, and they are simply looking for any evidence of what happened to her. So we're going to meet up, but if you guys want to go this way or that way, it's fine. Friends and family of Maya Millette gathered for another search, looking for any sign of the missing Chula Vista mom. The more eyes on this case, the better. Um, hopefully we'll find something. The 39 year old was last seen almost seven weeks ago at her San Miguel Ranch home. Since then, volunteers have searched numerous trails. This search was inspired by Lauren Ireland, who lives nearby and recently went on a hike on this trail. There's some slopes that go down, down the embankment, and there's quite a bit of water. In fact, there's a pond that's about six feet deep out there. So we want to do some more intensive searching in the embankments, um, not just on the trail itself. We want to kind of go down to where potentially there could be a body missing or hiding. The family says Chula Vista police recently consulted with the FBI, but so far there aren't any new leads. Earlier this month, investigators said Millette's husband, Larry, retained a lawyer and stopped cooperating. He previously told News 8 he's grateful for the police and is trying to protect the couple's children. The searches like this one are largely led by Millette's sister. It's been heavy every day, too. It's like, you know, as I said, it's seven, seven weeks now. So it's, it's getting again heavier and heavier and more painful every day that we, we can't you know we can't find her but she says it's the strength of the community support to keep searching week after week that keeps her and her husband going you know we feel like sometimes we are alone but then we show we show up and all these people show up it's like oh cool you know it's a, it's a nice little re relief for the family of course if you have any information that can help locate millet you can contact the san diego area crime stoppers if you'd like to remain anonymous or the chula vista police department Steve and Alicia. And that breaking news is in the mid city area. One person found dead after a house fire. This was a scene before crews arrived. Flames and thick black smoke shooting into the air happened at a home in the 4100 block of Fairmount Avenue around 3 o'clock. San Diego Fire Rescue had a difficult time fighting the flames because of the nearby power lines. Arson investigators are currently on scene looking into what happened. Tonight, San Diego County is seeing the fewest new coronavirus cases since early November. The 517 confirmed cases today marks the lowest single day total since November 9th. The number of tests today weren't reported, but the two week positivity rate has fallen to 5%. COVID hospitalizations fell by more than 30 to 643, counting a nearly 60% drop over the past month. The ICU count fell by 8 to 216. Two additional deaths were reported. That total is now 3,190. A reminder for anyone who has a vaccination appointment at the Petco Park Superstation this week, be prepared for possible delays. UC San Diego Health already announced that tomorrow's appointments have been canceled those will automatically be rescheduled. The site is still waiting for vaccine shipments that were delayed by last week's winter storms nationwide. Today, temperatures soared into the 70s across much of Texas, but the misery continues after last week's historic winter storm. At least 10 million Texans remain without clean drinking water after the cold burst the pipes out there and power outages knock water treatment plants offline. Now some customers who didn't lose power are facing astronomical electricity bills, some as high as $15,000. At least 76 deaths across the South have now been blamed on that storm. And that freezing storm also caused oil refineries to shut down, affecting gas prices across the country, including right here in San Diego. But experts say that's only part of our problem, which is why they believe that our prices will stay high for a while.
349 a gallon here, 369 there, and even higher at other gas stations around town. Everything in San Diego is going so high now, and the gas prices are just killing us. Gas prices in San Diego County have gone up 31 of the past 32 days. The average for a gallon of regular unleaded in San Diego is now at 360, and that is up seven cents from a week ago, and it's up 25 cents per gallon from a month ago at this time. AAA says several things are fueling the spike, including more cars on the road pushing up demand. A lot of people are actually driving a little bit more now, uh, especially with the recent uh, restrictions loosening up and the uh, stay at home orders loosening up a little bit here in Southern California. Unusually cold weather in other parts of the country also isn't helping, not only shutting down gas stations, but refineries too. A one third of U.S. crude oil uh, production is offline because of that severe winter weather that we saw, not just in Texas, but in many parts of the Midwest. California doesn't get gas from Texas, but Arizona does. So we've been sending some of our fuel across the state line to help our neighbors. And while San Diegans want to help others, times are tough here, too. We have a company that has five trucks involved in it. So our fuel bill is running about almost two to three thousand dollars a month, but there's nothing you can do about it. AAA believes the pain at the pump will get even worse before it gets better. We're heading into the spring when a lot of refineries start doing maintenance, meaning there will be even less supply. As for how high it will go, they say that's hard to predict because with the pandemic, it's not clear how many families will take road trips over spring break in the summer. But with so many businesses already struggling, even a little spike in prices really hurts. The bad thing is when you own a small business, which we are a small business, you can't pass it on to anybody. It can only raise prices so far. AAA says keeping your tires properly inflated and getting heavy items that you don't need out of your car can help increase your mileage and save you some money. Well, things are beginning to warm up a bit, and strong winds have also arrived, but how long will they stick around? Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Man, dry out there today, Sean. Scary. Wait. Oh, wait do you see the humidity, Steve. They are incredibly low. And talk about the temperatures. They are incredibly high for this time of year. 82, 65 is the average. So uh, it is definitely warm out there. 17 degrees above average. As far as where we should be, 46 was our low last night with those clear, dry air mass over us. 51 is the typical average for a 30-year period here in Southern California. That was not the case last night. Those winds have calmed down a little bit. We're still in the uh, 15 to 20 mile, around, mile an hour range in the foothills, but up around, say, uh, Julian and Wyola at 29, Alpine at 31. These winds are going to shift just a little bit over the next 24 hours as more of an onshore flow comes in. You mentioned the dry conditions across San Diego, Steve. 13% in Alpine, 10% in El Cajon, 15% in Escondido. Yeah, it's dry everywhere, even out to the coastline. 20%, 30% here and there. Tomorrow, another warm 174. Not as warm as today, though. And then we start to cool down as a trough moves through the Pacific Northwest. 81, though, again, in the inland microclimate. 78 and then 72. But don't get uh, too comfortable with that. Another Santa Ana on the way. All right, shall see in a few minutes for more on that. A drive through style event today in El Cajon aimed to help families and individuals with special needs protect themselves against COVID. Home of Guiding Hands, an organization focused on serving those with developmental and intellectual disabilities, set up the free PPE distribution at their headquarters today, handing out masks and hand sanitizers to those in need. The numbers show anywhere from two to three times greater likelihood of death if somebody with a developmental disability uh, contracts COVID. So. Our goal is to get as much uh, protection out there as we can for, for this very vulnerable population. The organization aimed to distribute around 500 masks and sanitizers to families who drove through their event today.